Hi, I'm WTOP film critic Jason Fraley, and all month long we're ranking the best movies in every genre. 30 genres over 30 days, and today we're breaking down my favorite crime movies. Now, before you check out the list, it's important to know that I differentiated crime movies with I made a separate thing for gangster movies. Now, I know that could obviously be folded into the crime. Um, a lot of other lists probably do that. But as I was compiling, you know, The Godfather and Goodfellas and stuff, Bonnie and Clyde, I was like, you know what? These movies have their own sort of um, elements and iconography to them. And I found that I could easily fill a gangster movie list from 25. So instead, it's, I'm being, you know, full disclosure, I'm just trying to fit more movies here, guys. So I had top 25 crime movies separately. And so for this, it's not the gangster movies. It is the crook the con men, the heists, the capers, and of course, the police dramas. This list is filled with great police dramas from old days to newer ones. One of those instant classics is, to me, Hell or High Water, which I thought was great with Chris Pine and uh, Ben Foster, and one of my favorite lines of recent years by the, the waitress in the small town that comes up and says, what don't you want on the menu? I love it. Um, Training Day, I put in here. Denzel Washington's uh, best actor win. Uh, Shaft, of course. Who, who can't? I, I, I'm already thinking of the theme. You know, he's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. And then uh, Serpico. Oh, my God. Al Pacino as Serpico is one of the most iconic uh, gritty roles in history in New York. Uh, similarly, another Al Pacino movie with De Niro in the movie. Heat, that scene where they act across each other was their first time ever on screen together. Yes, they were both in Godfather Part two, but that was two different storylines and two timelines. Heat was the first time these two legends uh, were across from each other. Uh, Bullet, of course. Bullet and Dirty Harry I have. These two San Francisco cops. Uh, Steve McQueen is in Bullet. And, uh, of course, uh, Clint Eastwood as Dirty Harry. Um, I mean, we've all quoted that. Do you feel lucky? Do you, punk? And, of course, from one of the sequels, go ahead. Make my day. I think even Reagan quoted that one. Um, we also, of course, get the French Connection. Uh, while, while Bullet had one of the great um, uh, chase sequences, French Connection is my favorite chase sequence, where we have Gene Hackman as Popeye Doyle uh, on the case, and he's driving under an elevated train. So the whole movie, he's chasing the bad guy on the train, but he's swerving down here. And the way, read up on how they shot that scene. Um, it's unbelievable. They, you know, I, I think they, I think they're actually driving through real traffic, and it was absolutely insane um, that people didn't crash and die while shooting that. William Friedkin winning Best Picture for that, and setting up him to make The Exorcist. So if you like The Exorcist, the French connection uh go back and check that one out and then rounding out the police dramas two coen brothers movies fargo which i'll get to more in a second and then no country for old men uh no country won best picture in 2007 uh a coen brothers masterpiece uh where tommy lee jones is is an aging lawman um you know it's kind of a western setting but uh similar to hell or high water but tommy lee jones is there trying to catch javier bardem's horrific uh villain where he has the little cow gun and, and call, call it in the air friendo uh, but tommy lee jones i think it's one of the great portraits of modern day crime where an old school cop um, I mean, we saw him in The Fugitive, which is also on this list, uh, where, you know, set, we're going to set up a perimeter and catch Harrison Ford. Um, but in this, he's at the point where he's like, modern day violence, I am too old for this. It's no country for old men. He, he can't even fathom uh, how to handle crime nowadays. And I feel like with a lot of the shootings and everything, a lot of us are kind of at that point. And so, um, especially in, I think, the decade plus since that movie came out, after all these mass shootings, um, I think No Country is even more powerful today, where we all kind of throw our hands up and say, man, this is No Country for old men. Now, some of that police drama stuff got pretty heavy, so I wanted to balance it out with some lighter movies about some heists and con men and capers. These are crime movies, but I think they're a little bit more fun, like your, you know, fish called Wanda's of the world, or Ocean's Eleven. I mean, who doesn't love George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, Don Cheadle, uh, Julia Roberts, all of them doing the big uh, Vegas casino heist? I actually think that's a rare case the seat of, a, of a remake that was better than the original. I think Steven Soderbergh and all those Clooney and all those guys actually topped the Rat Pack of Sinatra uh, 1960. Go back and watch that one and then watch this one and you'll say, yeah, I think you're right. Um, also included here, of course, American Hustle, which is a movie that um, got a ton of Oscar nominations and didn't win any of them. Um, but I want to keep holding it up. I, put, I threw it in my at the bottom of my top ten here because I thought it was great. Um, I know 12 Years a Slave won. It was sort of the prestige picture of the year. And, I mean, deserved it. It was, it was a great uh, movie, and we'll put, talk about that when we get to epics. But I wanna also want to hold up American Hustle. Uh, there's a lot of cool uh, study of artifice here. David O. Russell, the characters always say, you know, we're going to do it from the feet up. And David O. Russell starts on their feet and constantly 
tilting up throughout the whole movie. There's a great circling kiss, kind of like Vertigo, but where Christian Bale and Amy Adams are kissing inside of a spinning clothes rack. Uh, of course, we get Jeremy Renner's Tragic Fall as, as the mayor, um, and which with that ELO song, uh, the 10538 Overture, still echoes in my ear. And of course, Jennifer Lawrence, um, great, and, and Bradley Cooper. I mean, it was a pretty stacked movie. I want to hold that up. But the movie that I think uh, American Hustle was trying to be the Sting. I love this thing. Um, George Roy Hill. It was um, him reuniting, getting the band back together after Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Uh, Paul Newman and Robert Redford reuniting um, for this this little cool tale of uh, con men here. It won Best Picture in 1973. It has the, the distinction of being the best picture that won in between the two Godfather movies. <laughs> Godfather won in 72 and 74. Uh, we'll get to that in Gangsters, but right in the middle, The Sting. You could also add in Fight Club. Uh, we have that in here. Uh, Wall Street. Um, that, it's not a lighthearted one, but a little bit with you know Mike Douglas and, and Charlie Sheen uh, saying greed is good as Gordon Gecko. That is crime on a whole nother level, just like Fight Club with the soap and the ultimate terrorism, but I had to put him in here in crime. Now, a lot of these crime movies we've mentioned already are straight out of Hollywood and nothing wrong with it. I love it. I'm an American, but Foreign flicks, there's some great crime movies like La Haine, a great, great movie with Vincent Cassell. City of God, I think is, I mean, come on, that has to be towards the top of anyone's list out of Brazil. Um, it kind of did for Rio de Janeiro and Crime in the Streets there, um, what The Wire did for Baltimore on television. If you've not seen City of God, like hit pause now and stop watching and just like go see it. It's it's unbelievable, uh, unbelievable crime flick. Uh, Run Lola Run, the Tom Tickver movie, uh, her running and, and having to repeat it three times over. I, there's few movies that have that kinetic energy like Run Lola Run. Um, and then of course I also had uh, Breathless, um, which I don't know if a lot of American uh, newer or younger audiences have seen, but if you're at all aware of uh, Jean-Luc Godard and the French New Wave, um, Breathless is a must. And uh, I also would say, I also threw in Pink Flamingos, John Waters. It's not a foreign flick, but it's a total art house. I'd say it's probably one of the movies that I, I it's hard for me to recommend, but I put it on the list because we needed a John Waters, but it's hard to recommend because some people are going to hate it, and some people are just going to think it's so kitschy and trashy fun. I mean, even Waters calls it like a trashy fun movie with Divine. And it's set in Baltimore. Give it a shot. But uh, you know what? We had to balance the art in the mainstream here. We tried to do that on every list, and this is where we did it. Now, of all of these great crime movies, it was so hard to determine what the top slot was. But for me, every time I close my eyes and think of a great crime movie, two came to mind. Number two, I put Fargo. Um, I know a lot. I know they finally won. The Coen Brothers finally won Best Picture for No Country for Old Men. Um, but to me, Fargo is my favorite of theirs. Not only did it launch a great TV series with Billy Bob Thornton, um, but to me, I think it was the perfect combination of the Coen sensibilities. You know, No Country was their best example of a drama thriller, like a lot of those movies they've done. And then, of course, uh, if you want to look on the co straight comedy side, it's more of a Big Lebowski. But to me, Fargo married those two things brilliantly. And I think it was actually ahead of its time um, in terms of uh, strong female roles. I mean, yes, we'd had, you know, Clarice Starling, but uh, Marge Gunderson as the pregnant, um, you know, woman cop here solving the case, I think is really ahead of its time. I mean, Frances McDormand won just this year for uh, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. But to me, Marge Gunderson is her career role. And just look at, th look at that social change dynamics there with her and her husband Norm I mean she gets the call in the middle of the night and has to go off to work Norm is like I'll, I'll wake up and make you some eggs Marge you know he's the the housewife making the eggs like in the old movies they do a total gender flip and I love them together yes everyone remembers um, the the bloody wood chipper and the great atmosphere and the accents and the blood on the white snow and all that stuff uh, which is great it's textbook thriller stuff but and of course William H Macy oh my god they shoot him through the blinds of, of, uh, of the used car salesman this slime Slimy Jerry Lundergaard, look how they shoot through the window and they use vertical blinds like jail bars closing in on the whole movie. It's amazing. Uh, but to me, it all comes down to Marge and Norm in the end, her pregnancy, and she says, just three more weeks. And uh, to me, if we could all have a, a marriage that great, it'd be great. And the theme of the movie, I mean, she tells the criminal in the end as they're driving, you know, don't you know there's a little more to life than a little money? It's Norm. But to me, the top crime movie, I had to give the edge to the movie that it's just stuck in my brain and it scared the crap out of me, but Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. Um, I don't think there is a better examination of um, what urban alienation can do. Um, you know, De Niro is 
iconic and scary as hell as Travis Bickle, uh, you know, moonlighting as a, a cab driver. It just, you, you get, I mean, the way Scorsese directs it um, with the, the steam coming out of the steam grates and that great, almost jazz-inspired uh, Bernard Herrmann score, he actually died. He sent, he sent Scorsese the, the, the theme and died, like, you know, a day or two later. It was his last work after a great career with Hitchcock and everyone else. Um, but Taxi Driver, oh, my God. I mean, we get Sybil Shepherd. Peter Boyle, um, Albert Brooks, but De Niro, oh, oh uh, Car Harvey Cattell too, uh, and Jodie Foster as the, look at that cast, Jodie Foster uh, and her breakthrough role as the teenage prostitute. But to me, it's it's just visually um, amazing. The music. And of course, the most iconic improvised line of all time, De Niro standing in the mirror saying, you talking to me? You talking to me? I'm the only one here. Who else are you talking? You talking to me? See my full top 25 crime movies on WTOP.com's entertainment page. Uh, join in on our blog and tune in tomorrow as we break down the best documentaries.